I wanted to give a June garden update here in zone 7A because this thing has exploded over the last few weeks. Corn has gotten huge, everything's gotten huge. So I'm gonna walk you through all these plants. My corn has gone crazy in the back here. You can see it's taller than the fence. So this stuff is huge. I actually have three rows of it. The back row is Silver Queen and it's been tasseling for about a week now. Here's those three rows. You can kind of see spacing on them here. I've got about 12 plants in each row, about six inch spacing, and then the rows are about a foot apart. Um, but the back row here is the Silver Queen, which has been tasseling. And then I have Sweet Bicolor as the middle row, and I actually just got the first tassel on it here. And then in the front row, I have one that's just called Incredible, and I think it's just all yellow corn. Then with it, I actually have squash, and the squash is going berserk this year. Um, these are companion crops. This is two out of the three sisters. I would throw some beans in there, but I really just don't see much room because the squash has just gone wild. Uh, it's done really well this year. I used some myco inoculant on the roots. I think it's liked that a lot, but these leaves are just massive. And then getting down in here, we have quite a few squash. I'm actually gonna pick these today and then I'll show them to you. We have a few, quite a few squash in them starting. And then this one over here, and look at the size of these leaves. But this one is actually zucchini. And this is a yellow zucchini. So it looks like I'm growing two squash plants, but it's actually a zucchini plant and a squash plant. I'm about to pick some of these as well. I'll show them to you. Hard to even reach down in there to get it. Oh, look at that bad boy. Good looking squash. Got to get kind of down in this corn here to get even get to these. They've gone so crazy. There's another one. Um, the reason I have this chicken wire around here is Fred the groundhog is back and has been wrecking havoc. So you'll see the chicken wire around this bed with the corn, squash, and okra. This bed with the peppers and tomatoes. Uh, he doesn't seem to bother those. And then that's the strawberry bed on the end with the bird cage on it. Can't even get to the stem on this zucchini, so I'm gonna see if I can just twist it off. Ah, uh, there it comes. Bright yellow zucchini, very cool. Gonna snag this one too, it's gotten pretty large. Oh yeah. How cool. Immediately next to the corn and squash in the same 12 foot by four foot bed, I've got nine okra plants and these things were kind of slow to start but they have just started popping off they really love the super hot weather so it's been very hot this week and they've started growing like crazy um, they'll be the last ones to wilt when it's really hot and we actually have our first couple okra going on here you can see some of the background there as well so i'm about to pick them first picking of the season So I only got five with this first picking. This one is crazy looking. He's like a full circle. I think a bug might have got to him or something. And this one is honestly borderline a little too big, but it'll still probably be tender enough. When it's really hot out like this, you got to be careful because they'll go from this size, which is a little too small, to this size, which is borderline too big in like a day. So you really got to check these like every day. Um, and I'm sure by the end of the week, I'll probably have enough to make a meal here. This is a couple days later. The okra flowers are actually very cool as well. Very pretty just as a flowering plant, even though it makes okra too. Um, I didn't know until recently it's related to hibiscus. So similar to hibiscus flowers, okra has these really cool, really pretty flowers. I made a dedicated one of these barrel planters for each of my blueberry bushes this year, kind of between the metal raised beds, and they seem to have really enjoyed it. Um, I've added some little companion plants in here too, and it's been going pretty well. These ones with these cool shaped leaves are nasturtiums, which are pretty flower, and I think they'll look nice kind of cascading off these barrels, and they're a good companion for blueberries. And then I've also just got some Blue Lake bush green beans in these barrels as well, just to kind of fix the nitrogen for my blueberries. And those are just getting going, but they're quick, so I'll probably get a couple rounds of them in this year. 
in my yellow tub this year. I'm growing a chocolate ghost pepper, so I'll have a full length video out on this pepper plant this fall. But look at these leaves. These things are huge. Many of the, them are like as big as my hand. Um, and then I have a volunteer tomato just kind of popping up in here too. I've had these popping up everywhere this year. So I'm not sure if they're in my compost as seeds or if birds have been spreading around or what's going on, but I've just had tomatoes everywhere popping up all across the yard and in other planters. Earlier this spring, I just planted some potato pieces in this spare raised bed and actually got a decent amount of potato plants. And they did really well for a while, but look pretty sick now. I'm not sure if this is insect damage or disease or if the potatoes are just ready. My bet is a combination of kind of all three of those. So at this point in the season, decided to just dig them up and actually got a decent amount of potatoes from each plant, maybe half a pound or a pound per plant. But there were 16 plants in this raised bed, so it turned into a very good potato haul for us, and I'm happy with it. It was very little input once I planted the pieces in March, and it's now June, so three months got us quite a few potatoes. But time to turn this bed kind of for some summer crops. I have a spare squash and zucchini that have been in the greenhouse looking for a home, uh, while they were in there, they actually got some damage from, I don't know if it was Fred the Groundhog or a rabbit. They have some leaves and really good roots, so I decided to plant them in here and see how they do. All right, now that I got my extra squash planted in the bed next to it, that's my herb bed this year. So, you know, I've just got the classic mint, basil. I'm actually trimming some basil for some pasta tonight. And I just wanted to show you, instead of just, you know, taking a leaf or two here or there, it's actually better for it to pinch the stem off. So see, if I pinch this stem right here, both of these shoots will grow into a new stem, making this basil much bushier and bigger plant. So I'm just going to take it and pinch it off here. So instead of just pulling these leaves individually, I am just going to take this whole thing and I'm going to do that kind of all around the plant got a bunch of those that should keep this plant bushy and producing all summer long for me. Chives have been around a couple years now and so has the thyme back in there. Um, I don't know what my dill is doing this year. It is going crazy. This is it going all the way up. But you might notice behind this and actually planted in the same bed this year I have my cucumbers and then I just have this nice little string trellis on the fence kind of taking advantage of that structure there for them to grow on and they have been covered in flowers this week you can kind of see how many flowers are just all along it so i think i'm getting pretty good pollination we actually have our first two cucumbers for the year here's one or maybe three that is this one's a little funky see another one forming down there and then i've got this one down here that looks about right so i'm gonna pick uh, two of these real quick and add them to my haul for the day. First two cukes of the year. I'm sure I'll be inundated with them soon, given all these flowers. Next to the cucumbers, still along the same fence line, this is another just volunteer tomato that popped up. I have no idea what type of tomato this is, but it looks really healthy. And I think what happens is birds will sit on the fence and just do their business, and then the seeds fall and plants tomatoes. But this one looks healthy, it's in a good spot. I figured I'd just let it stay. And I'll probably support it from the fence at some point. Next to it, another one of those blueberry planters with the green beans and nasturtiums in it. And next to that, I have my asparagus bed, which has really gone crazy this year. Uh, this is the second year since planting these crowns. This is a four foot by four foot bed, and I have nine crowns in it. They've done really well this year. I probably could have picked some asparagus, but I'm holding off till year three on these. You can see some asparagus spears popping up here. It's funny, I, I realize not many people know how asparagus grows, but it almost looks like a cartoon when it just comes up out of the ground. It's just like, who would expect it to grow like that? But it's just so obvious. And then it creates these pretty ferns. I really like them. so. I'm not too bothered by putting in the investment of letting them grow for a couple years before you can eat them. Uh, year three, so next year I should be able to get some, and then they'll produce for me for 15 to 25 years, probably. And then I just planted some green beans 
around them as well. Uh, just kind of slip those in wherever I can. These are just bush blue lake green beans again. They'll fix the nitrogen and this asparagus is heavy nitrogen feeders. So I think it'll like that. I actually added some compost to this bin uh, just a couple weeks ago and that's when it really went wild and started pushing up more and more spears. But excited for that. Over here by the stock tank pool, which has been another little side project that's been really fun that I've been enjoying this summer. I might make a video on it later. I have my Tabasco peppers in the pasta sauce crack key jars. They've kind of stalled out though, honestly. So today I'm gonna to be putting them in a bigger system. I got these Tabascos in their new larger crack key homes. Subscribe if you wanna see a check-in on them later this summer. And check out the video on me building these if you haven't. Um, they did really well. I really don't have any regrets on them. They did a great job of getting the Tabascos from seedling size to about this size. And that's just kind of when they stalled out. So I figured I'd give them a bigger home and some better nutrients. This is my setup for peppers this year. Two years ago, I did solely these five gallon grow bags and the peppers did awesome. Then I went to more raised beds for the peppers last year and they did okay. But I'm back to the five gallon grow bags. So I just have one pepper in each bag. I think this spicy guy is a scotch bonnet, which I'm growing a lot of this year. And then I've just got the five gallon grow bag and beneath each one, I've put a paver just to keep them up off the ground. If they're sitting on the ground, the roots tend to grow through and into the ground. And then when you pick them up, um, it kind of pulls the roots out. So I've just got those sitting on five, on the five gallon bag sitting on pavers, just kind of all along here. And you can see all my peppers just along the raised beds tucked out of the way. Next is my Ahi Fantasy that's actually on its third year. I don't know if you guys saw that short, but I have a short about this plant out. There's the stem from the first couple years and then it popped up kind of at the base for its third year of life. Uh, this is actually another Scotch bonnet. Then these are just some kale plants I have left over from this spring, but they're still kicking around. So I'll have them until Fred the groundhog gets them. And then this is my yellow T-Rex super hot that I topped. Got a little video on that coming out. And then lemon drop pepper, Tabasco pepper, which was a little stunted as well. You can see his leaves were not looking too great, but these new leaves look very healthy. I'm excited to see him take off. The orange tiger pepper is doing great. Its dark foliage is still looking awesome. I'm really glad I got this one. And if you watched my super hot transplant video, um, you might remember I didn't, I chose not to top this pepper. And I'm glad I didn't because it has forked several times since and it's actually about to flower. I'm excited to see what the flowers look like. It appears they might have some purple streaks in them when they open up, but I almost topped it because it was so tall and then I didn't. And I'm glad I did not because of that good fork. And it does look like it was actually so tall. We're still getting some shoots off the bottom here, which should be good for pepper production. In the four foot by 12 foot raised bed behind the peppers, I have kind of a three-way combination of peppers, onions, and tomatoes. And that combo has done well for me. You can see the tomatoes have gone ballistic the past three weeks. They have just covered, I'll give you kind of close-ups of them in a minute. Then in the middle, I've had a row of onions planted since early this spring. As of this week, they've actually just flopped over, which I think means they're ready. And then in the front, I've got some peppers. So I've got six peppers in the front. Uh, these are bells. I actually have a little bell pepper starting here and it's that plant's flowering well so I have one two bell peppers I've got to uh, tie up these tomatoes because they've actually been going crazy and topped their cages and now are hanging over the peppers kind of shading them but anyway I've got two bell peppers then I have two hatch chilies that I'm really excited for those are the big gym hatch chilies I'm glad those plants are getting a little bigger because those peppers grow to 12 inches long. And then lastly, I have two just kind of classic jalapenos. These are called jalapeno giganteas. And we've got a decent amount of small little jalapenos on the plants here. So this one has four and more blooms. And then this one's about the same, four. But yeah, you can see these onions that's what they do is they flop over when they're ready. 
So I'm excited to pick some of them. I'll pull up one and kind of show you how we're doing. That's about the size I got this year. It's not too bad. Probably could have fed them a little more, but I'm happy with it. And I'm about to have about 50 of those jokers just out of this bed between the peppers and tomatoes. Tomato time though, working from left to right. On the left here is an heirloom variety. This is Mr. Stripey and it's been flowering well and got kind of some small tomatoes up top here. Down beneath though, I have some huge tomatoes. These things are gigantic. Uh, I'm excited for them to kind of start ripening a bit more. I think it's been kind of cool at night up to this point, so they've been staying green pretty long, but once they ripen, they should have some cool yellow stripes on them. Next to it, I have the Super Sweet 100. It's a cherry tomato, uh, indeterminate as you can tell, because it has topped its cage long ago, and now it's just flopping. This is the one I really got to tie up, because it's shading some of these uh, bell and hatch chilies. But look at some of these trusses of tomatoes. That's just near the top. Still flowers everywhere. Down beneath here. I actually have my first couple starting to kind of turn on the left there. But that is a huge truss of delicious cherry tomatoes. Look at this one here. Again, just crazy. Uh, I've fertilized these once since planting. I think other than that, the only secret is I planted them very deep. So I pr pruned pretty much all the leaves off, dug as deep a hole as I could, and then planted them in there with some Dynamico and some calcium all-purpose fertilizer. This one in the middle, I've got to tie up. This is some sort of tomato that I either grew last year or this year or just came from compost. This one is a volunteer as well. Just popped up in the raised bed. Looks to be some sort of cherry tomato though. I've got to tie it up as well because it's kind of covered up the uh, peppers here and onions. But next to it, another heirloom variety. This is just heirloom beefsteak. So a classic, um, you can see they, it is being very productive. Got some Quite a few little beefsteak tomatoes on the top here. Right here is one of the biggest clusters though. These things are giant, wrinkly, ugly. Down here some more. Just big wrinkly tomatoes. I am excited to have some of these just sliced uh, on a plate. I'm sure they'll be delicious. And lastly, in this bed, I have the Roma tomato. So just kind of a typical sauce tomato, still flowering, which is great. And a bunch of tomatoes kind of around this side. Actually a lot of Roma tomatoes in here, which would be great. It'd be awesome to make some pasta sauce with these. Just have with, uh, with some noodles and then maybe add them to some of my onions and make some salsa or something. This is one of the biggest Roma tomatoes I've ever seen. You can see with my hand there. This one is giant. And I think this one will be my first Roma tomato to turn red this year. I'm about to tie all these up though, because like I said, they are kind of taking over. So I think I'm probably gonna pull all these onions in the middle since they flopped over, let them kind of start to cure. And then I'll tie up these tomatoes. That's what I got uh, these two green steaks for. Just pulled all of those, now just got them on this pallet in the shed so that they can dry out. Got these wild tomatoes kind of tied up for now, somewhat. It is crazy that it's only June and they're this big. I'm not sure what I'm gonna do. Come July and August, these things might be 10 feet tall. But for now, got them supported to where the peppers in the front can get light again. 
these tomatoes are really neat. These are spoon tomatoes. So they're gonna be really small tomatoes. You can see they're flowering really well and it's neat because the flowers even on these things are just itty bitty. Very small flowers, but very productive. Ton of flowers on these plants. And down below, if I can find one, we've got some trusses of tomatoes already and these things are itty bitty. Like here's my pinky next to one. Long trusses though. See this truss still has flowers on the end even. Um, here's a good one over here. Yeah, check out these. These are spoon tomatoes. Never heard of them. I got the seeds for free uh, with a seed order for some pepper seeds. Uh, I'm gonna shout them out to in my Scotch Bonnet Grow video that'll come out this fall. These are the Scotch Bonnets. I just kind of mentioned those spoon tomatoes in that video because uh, I actually planted them on the same day and I got the seeds in the same order. They were the free seeds that came with these Scotch Bonnet seeds. So kind of crazy. That's how much the Scotch Bonnet has grown uh, in the time since planting. And that's the tomatoes, like three feet tall. Up above the pool on the porch here, I've got my ahi lemon drop peppers in my little DWC systems that I built. If you saw that YouTube short, I did a short on how I built these little deep water culture systems out of some used protein powder containers. They've been working out really well. These peppers have gotten really tall in the past couple weeks just with this warm June weather and they've actually just started to make quite a few flower buds on here. So I'm making a full length video on these as well that I'll post on my page probably this fall but excited to see their progress in these little bitty systems. All right, last but certainly not least, they're not producing anymore, but I would be remiss if I didn't shout out my four foot by four foot strawberry bed here. It did amazing this spring. I built this little cage around it that flips back to keep the birds off of it. And I just got unbelievable production out of this this year. So I have five by five plants in the four foot raised bed. So 25 plants in here and a few bonus. And I actually got about 150 strawberries out of this setup this year, which I'm just thrilled on. Uh, like I said, they've stopped producing now. It's getting hot out. It's morning and it's over 90 degrees. So um, these have started producing some runners and I'll probably try to propagate some of them. That's kind of how I got this mini last year was just propagating some runners uh, into some new plants. But thank you so much for watching this tour uh, if you're still hanging on at this point. And I'll probably try to do one of these every month for the rest of the season just to show you what's going on, what's new in the garden, and what's producing. But thank you again for watching. Subscribe if you haven't, and have a good one.